Hello climbers, welcome to Climbing Hacks. Today I wanted to explain why the laces from La Sportiva solution break and how La Sportiva can improve their product so that their laces do not break. Before I start, I just wanted to go out and say that La Sportiva is not maliciously making these laces this way and maybe these flaws they exist just to optimize production so that it's easier to build these shoes. I could even say that the Tenaya Yatis, they have a very similar flaw but because of the way that the Tenayatis work, you do not really, this flaw doesn't really affect the product in the same way that it affects the solution. First, I need to address some misconceptions regarding this flaw, especially when you search for it on blogs and on Reddit. Uh, many people believe that this tear, this initial tear that you have on the laces, either Yatis or solutions, they start from small sharp edges and dents that you have on the grommet or on these eyelets, and they little by little grind through the lace and that's how the lace breaks. That's just not the case because it's fairly easy to notice that these laces, they start to break from outwards towards the inside. A second line of thought tries to explain this outside frame as a consequence of the shoe hitting the rocks and then this friction between the rocks and the grommet, the metal grommet, tearing and fraying the laces. Uh, this also is not the case and it's quite unlikely because as we rock climb with our laces facing outwards and our feet facing inwards, the, the laces they are safe when we are climbing, so it, they are rarely touching the, the rocks. The real problem is related to the small radius of curvature that you have in the grommets or eyelets. Uh, since these grommets they have been used on shoes, normal shoes, for a very long time, the kind of tension that you have in these shoes is not nearly as high as the tension that you have on rock climbing shoes. And because of this tension, the amount of stress that you have on the grommet, on the laces, when the, grace, the laces are passing through the grommet in this small radius, is a very, very high stress. Uh, and when I say stress, I mean, I mean specifically bending stress. And you might be thinking, why am I talking about bending? Looking at mechanics of materials from Hibbler, we can see that we have a bending chapter and bending can be better visualized by seeing lots of small uh, cubic elements and these elements as you bend the material, in the case the shoelace, you will have parts of it becoming closer to each other and other parts being far away as you can see in the small figure in the top. That means that if you change the radius of curvature that you have in the grommet, you can have less or more stress. Another thing that you can also do, and it's something that I, I really hope that the, the uh, guys from La Sportiva consider, is having either a wider element, a wider lace, as you can see in the Tenaya Yatis, or you can have a thicker element, which is what we did in the fix in the first video. So in here I am simulating the stresses that we have in the shoelace. I fix it on the top and I apply 100 newtons in the bottom, equivalent to 10 kilos. And as we apply this stress on the shoelace, we can see here in this FEA analysis that most of this stress is going to be felt on the outside because the inside of the shoelace will be supported by the grommet. If we increase the radius at which we are applying this force, this force is going to be better dissipated. Another thing is changing the element, wider or thicker. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed and take good care of your shoes. Next time you see a pair of solutions or yachts with broken laces, you already know what happened to them. See you around.